Okay, so the first concept that I want to talk about in Macbeth is the idea of wrongness and falsity. This is shown in three ways, or three really important ways. The first is rule. There's an idea of tyranny versus legitimate rule. And an interesting part of this is we always see Macbeth as a tyrant, which he is. However, we also never see any of the decisions he makes as a king. We see him as a tyrant because he's murdering for personal reasons, uh, which creates a connection between the personal and the job. Uh, they affect each other, is what Shakespeare is saying. We are not able to be a good king if we're a crazy killing madman. Um, which should be obvious, but Shakespeare wanted to let us know. Um, and then the next idea is supernatural prophecy fate. There are true prophecies, or at least Macbeth believes that there are true prophecies. And then there's this idea of the false prophecy or the man-made prophecy. Uh, so basically Macbeth hears all of these prophecies and he instantly believes that they're true, that they must be true. And the idea presented to us is that because Macbeth chooses to act on them, they become true. Not that they were always going to be true, so Macbeth acted. Uh, it's a relationship between decisions and fate. The next uh, part of the wrongness in this play is relationships. There's a comparison between love and codependence. In my opinion, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth were never in love. Uh, to me, this is shown through Lady Macbeth's death when she dies. Macbeth spends maybe ten lines mourning her, and then he just moves on with his ambition. Um, I don't care how crazy he is, if he had ever been truly in love with her, I think that Shakespeare would have made his pain at her death more obvious to us. Um, their codependence is shown through their uh, almost balancing act with guilt. When um, it, the play starts off, Macbeth is over here and he's feeling extremely guilty about killing Duncan and he doesn't want to do it. And Lady Macbeth is over here and she's like, just get on with it, you fool. But throughout the play, they kind of flip-flop and Lady Macbeth is trying to wash herself clean of the act and Macbeth is out killing more people without her help. Uh, the next idea is the relationship between intention, reasoning, and action. Um, it's shown that intentions can be just as bad as actions. For example, several times Macbeth does not actually murder the person, he just wants them dead and hires someone else to do it, which is just as bad as murdering them yourself. But then there's, an also, there's also this relationship between reasoning and how the past affects the future. This is shown mostly through Lady Macbeth. Um, she herself is unable to kill Duncan because of her relationship with her father, and he reminded her of her father, which shows that her past is clearly still affecting her future. Once again, this is reinforced through her random dead baby reference. She just kind of throws out in conversation very casually and creepily about her baby and how she would kill it uh, if it were not already dead, which once again shows that she was already suffering and that's it contributed to her madness and her decision making. So Shakespeare is showing us the relationship between the past, the present, and the future. Uh, the final idea I wanted to talk about is progression and transformation. This is shown first through Macbeth's madness and um, his and his madness in relationship to deaths. Uh, he starts off as a shoulder as a soldier, <laughs> and so he is clearly it's implied anyway that he has killed before, but it's in an honorable way um, in battle. And then he kills for ambition, and then he just starts slaughtering the Macduff clan willy-nilly for very limited reasons. Um, so he starts off as like an honorable soldier and ends up a madman. And then there's also a progression and transformation with his ambition. He starts off as the Thane of Glamis, and then he finds out that he could become Cawdor, so then all of a sudden he wants that. In the beginning, he was fine with Glamis, he was quite content, but he finds out that he could have more, so then he wants more. And then he could be king, so he wants to be king. And then eventually 
he wants uh, what he has for all of his future. Um, so he basically just eliminates all opposition and everyone. Um, Macbeth is an interesting play because there's this very precarious balance between good and evil, and it shows the main idea of this play is that nothing is as simple as it seems. The witches, they're not just supernatural. Um, Macbeth isn't just evil, especially Lady Macbeth is not just evil. Um, she's clearly deranged and pained, and though she starts off literally calling evil into herself, she wants to be consumed with evil. It's not even possible. By the end of the play, she feels guilt. So this is this play is basically Shakespeare telling us that things are a lot more complicated than we ever want to admit.